So Chuck, how often do you think about pollution? Quite a bit, honestly. I mean, <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I actually you're a green do. guy. You're I, a green I guy. A green guy. I think about it quite a bit, and 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 the uh, deleterious effect that it is having on our uh, our existence, our ecosystem. So so not all pollution is made of plastic. So very early on, the astronomers of the world have complained about light pollution. When you had the electrification of the cities, all of a sudden, the night sky was competing with lights that were shedding photons up into the atmosphere. And I grew up in a city, so I had no understanding of the night sky until my first visit to the Hayden Planetarium at age nine. Nice. And I know it was nice. And I looked up. And the, the lights dimmed and the stars came out. I said this before. I'll say it again. I thought it was a hoax. <laughs> Way too right. many stars. Like, Wait I don't a know. minute. All I don't that know. is up there? I don't know what this is. I'll go along with it for now. But stop trying to pull my leg. Next time I come back, show it how it really is. Fake and news. <laughs> fake news. <laughs> it was totally fake news. Right. And, uh, and to this day, from mountaintops, when I've gone to high-level mountaintops with high-level telescopes... I look up at the night sky and I say, it reminds me of the Hayden Planetarium. <laughs> that's, wow. I, that, that's an urban... <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, an urban frame of reference. An urban uh, frame of reference that was. So, plus I'm old enough to remember what not only was there light pollution, as there still is, but back then there was also air pollution. And today we think of the polluting the atmosphere with carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is transparent, so that's not what I was thinking at the time. Uh, I was thinking auto exhaust and and this sort of thing. So not only did lights, but auto exhaust disrupt your ability to see all objects in the night sky, especially the dimmest objects. And we should do a whole explainer on noise of all kinds. Uh, so remind me to do this. Yes. But let me let me just say, if you can, if you're in a perfect dark night and you can just barely see a very dim star. And then other light gets added to this. The first things to go are the dimmest stars. So you start hacking away at the dimmest things available to you simply because other light is competing with it. And it no longer shows up in, on your retina or even in a, in a camera. So these are problems. And so we've been living with this like our whole lives. In fact, there's something called the IDA, International, no, ID, uh, International... International Dark Sky Association. Okay, they okay. sound like a group of supervillains. <laughs> the idea. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I can tell you about them. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, We've called this meeting of the International <laughs> Dark Sky Association <laughs> to finalize our plans to permanently block out the sun. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> dark skies for everyone, 24 hours a day. Like, that's so funny. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Though, and how much will it cost? It will cost a million dollars. <laughs> uh, sir, I just want to let you know that's not a lot of money these days. Okay. Five million dollars? <laughs> What's the inflation rate? How, how much should we ask for? Should we ask for something more? Uh, did he have, was that whole conversation in the movie? I, yeah, I think so. It was, I don't know how it went, to be honest, but it was something like that. Just like, oh, and how much now is it? <laughs> so they, that organization has gotten more and more powerful. and more it Power not in a let's override you, but there's a lot of interesting, sensible things to do. For example... Let's say you're in an airplane and you're flying over a city and you look down and you see the suburbs and you see the street lights illuminating the streets. Right. At night right. from your airplane. Right. Do you know why you can see the street light? Uh, because uh, it's bright? I don't know. <laughs> why? Why? Why because somebody in that town is paying for electricity to go into this lamp to generate photons that are going up into the through the window of my airplane. Oh, I got you. So I got you. Like a lantern, the it's light's a, going everywhere. Everywhere. It's not when, directed. You don't need the light everywhere, do right. you? You only Why need it on the street. If I see your light, it means right. you are paying to illuminate my airplane flying overhead. That's if that's you can true. see any light at all, 
directly from its source. Somebody's paying to illuminate the sky. Right. So the IDA simply makes the economic argument. Do you want to save money? Okay, so you put a little hat on each lamp. Oh, that's All right? adorable. Now, wait a minute, and make it reflective. So, hey... That light that used to be going upwards is now coming downwards, and I don't need that much light. I was right. wasting half of it. Right. So now I can cut the wattage in half, or by whatever fraction, Right. use less light, and now I'm not illuminating the airplanes flying overhead. It's that simple. And that's why we don't do it. Because it's that <laughs> it's simple. simple. Because and it's, anything that simple, we just can't do. Which can't wrap our head around. So the town of Tucson, Arizona, which is proximal to Kitt Peak Mountain, which has Kitt Peak Observatory, which is one of the major observatories of the nation's astronomers, long ago came into an agreement with the municipal leaders to say, Look, I can, if, you're, if your place keeps getting brighter, we can't do our science. we got to move our base because the home base is in town where the, all the scientists hang out before they go to the mountain. And so, but they like this distinction. Plus, Arizona is beautiful and it's got deserts. And, you know, so why not preserve it all? And so they got together and there are ordinances, city ordinances that control how bright the lights can be, how, what, what kind of hat should be on them, when you should turn them off, all of this. And so... Uh, that was successful. That became a model for other towns to emulate. Right. And so that's the light pollution. And, and like, like they said, the air pollution is essentially gone relative to when I was growing up. Right. When I was growing up, I'd come home from school, from elementary school. You could brush the ash off your shoulders okay. from incinerated garbage that had gone into the sky that's and descended ridiculous. back to earth. That is just crazy. It was snowing garbage. Snowing ash. Correct. That's I, every, every day. That's, I, a, I would, that's I, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, so that's that. But we have more pollution than that. Right. Wait, There's let me more... just say this about the light pollution that I just thought about right now because of what you just said. Mm -hmm. uh, when they were building the big hotels in Atlantic City, of course, I'm from Philly. So Atlantic City, they were building these giant hotels. Um, and uh, the conservationists uh, in the area the scientists that you know care for animals and sea life and birds, they re basically realize that you're killing all the birds because they never know that it's nighttime. Um, yeah, and people. Okay, so at like, least I didn't lose my at least I didn't lose my life over this. <laughs> 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the bird it's just completely disrupting all of their just all everything. Their they they had no more, no more circadian rhythm, and they were flying until the and they were dying of exhaustion and all kinds of crazy stuff it was it was a weird little study that they did but uh wow. and i don't know what they did about it because they haven't changed anything but i think the consensus from the public was they're seagulls who gives a crap oh. <laughs> <laughs> seagulls and pigeons yeah. right we seagulls had plenty and of those. pigeons plenty more of them where they right. came from you want us to care about that dirt i mean first of all we could see if they were chickens they're delicious but you know it was terrible it was terrible so chuck it's not only light pollution that worries astronomers when we think of light you think of like visible light right but we don't only use visible light to communicate with the universe or to receive the universe. We also have radio waves, huge radio telescopes, okay? Well, wait a minute, we have TV, you know, AM, FM, satellite, microwave, all those are in the radio parts of the spectrum. So not only is there light pollution with visible light that interferes your eyes from seeing dim objects, there's radio wave pollution mm. that prevents our radio telescopes from seeing dim objects. So other bands of the electromagnetic spectrum are also polluted. And so our best radio telescopes have to be put in places where there's like a radio free zone around it. All right. Just so that we don't get noise, radio noise coming in, disrupting our observations of radio galaxies, the microwave background of the formation of the universe, and all of this. Well, there you go, people. Cool it on the hot pockets. <laughs> microwave. Yeah. Take it easy <laughs> on the hot pockets, people. And you know what else? Uh, the remote fobs for cars right. also creates a, a background noise of radio waves wow. uh, to a radio telescope that is extremely sensitive. Right. So uh, leaving the realm of light, 
in that sense, there's also a new kind of pollution called satellite pollution. Oh my gosh. And so what happens here is the effect of this is the satellite is moving across your field of view and it's reflecting sunlight, so you get a streak. So other parts of your photo might be okay, but suppose that streak goes to the one object you're trying to look at. Right. So you need a way to sort of subtract it out from the process. We have people working on software to accomplish that right now. We don't know how this is all going to shake out in the coming years, so we're, we're preloading our, uh, our data reduction utilities just to try to subtract them out. Uh, I, I'm told I just attended a, a, a workshop on, on satellite pollution where there was an agreement with Elon Musk for some of his satellites to use a, a, a sunshade. Okay. All right. So even though they're up there, they will the the sun the sun will not reflect off of it down to us. And it did improve the seeing conditions. Gotcha. It did improve it. Yeah. But I think the, the whatever might be a long term solution to this has not yet arrived. So that that's what we're in the middle of now. That is kind of crazy. And the current most powerful telescope on Earth okay. is called the Vera Rubin Telescope, and it is designed to take movies of the night sky every single night. That is pretty dope. Okay, because think about it. Up till now, we've been taking just snapshot. Exactly. Okay. So if the thing did something different an hour later after you're on the way back to the computer, uh, tough, you, tucks, tough. <laughs> you, you missed it. <laughs> tough, <Okay>. tough. <laughs> yeah. You missed it. Right. Missed out. Right. Okay. Uh, so it's taking a movie so that... The t it's, it's called, um, uh, there's an entire branch of my field that concerns itself with things that change over time. Right. Because most images you're seeing is just a static picture of something, right? right. So the people who care about stuff that changes in the universe, uh, they, this will be a delight for them. And, but now that we're taking movies, we basically have movies of all these satellites crossing our field of view. And we have to distinguish between that and what might be a killer asteroid moving across the field of view because this has an asteroid alert system built in. Wow. So, without, I mean, this sounds more important than it might appear. <laughs> <laughs> because this ain't just looking at a telescope and going, what is that? Oh, that's some old Elon Musk junk. Don't worry about it. And then it ends up being a killer asteroid. Yeah, what is that? Oh, that's a killer asteroid that we almost mistook for an Elon Musk satellite. Right, right, yeah. Right. So, yeah, that's what we're confronting with right now. The, the, the buckets of pollution that influence the modern astrophysicist knows no bounds. Wow. And none of it has anything to do with plastic or carbon dioxide. What do you think of that? Well, what we should have is an astrophysicist standing next to a rocket with a single tear rolling down their oh, face. Oh, stop it! <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a public service announcement. All go. right. Right. Well, I'll volunteer. To, I'll be the tiering astrophysicist for That's, that. Uh, that'd be great. Space pollution. You only you can only stop you space can pollution. Stop space pollution. <laughs> all right, Chuck. That's all the time we got. All right, that was great. All right, the pollution. The astronomers edition on Star Talk. Yet another explainer video. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Keep looking up. <laughs>